Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is the part 9 of the .NET Core microservice with BABP. This, uh, in this video, we are going to just focus on the distributed event bus, which is uh, RabbitMQ in our case. Let's get started. So in the last video, we tried to create a tenant, but we got an error uh, because the SaaS service is trying to publish an event and then it was not able to publish um, because we didn't configure the RabbitMQ. So uh, in this uh, video, the first step is to configure the RabbitMQ. So we already have the service, um, sorry, we already have the packages um, available. So we already have the hosting and then uh, the package for the uh, event bus available in the shared module. So the only thing you have to do is uh, go to the app settings and then add the config here and it will automatically detect uh, your RabbitMQ setting. So for the SaaS service, this is the uh, name I have chosen. So the RabbitMQ name is taskey.sass. Uh, for the identity, it's taskey identity. And for the administration service, we will have taskey administration. Okay. And we still have our auth server. Okay. Administration identity says, and then this is the identity server. Just go to the app settings and then add our rapid queues. Okay. So once this is done, make sure you have rapid MQ running. I have my RabbitMQ running as a Docker container here, here. So, and uh, so I don't have to worry about it, but for you, make sure the RabbitMQ is running in locally in your machine. Um, uh, and because I mentioned the host name as a local host. So once that is done, the next step is handling the tenant created event. So let's do that. So we have to first um, handle it in the administration service because in the administration is where we are uh, seeding the permissions for the created tenant. So let's go and add in the host, create a folder called event handler and create a file tenant event handler. Oh, this is the file we are going to use. And here we are not doing anything crazy. We are just the event handler will uh, send us a tenant created ETO with the data in it. And we are just passing that event ETO uh, to the seed method. So uh, the seed method takes the tenant ID and then uh, changes the current tenant to that particular tenant and then uh, takes the um, uh, checks the multi tenancy and then takes all the permissions for the multi tenancy and then seeds the permission for the admin user. That's all it does. It just uh, takes the tenant and then seeds the permissions for that particular tenant for the admin user. Now, since we handle the permission side of it, let's go and handle the user side of it. So for that, add a um, folder here called event handler and we have to create the admin user. So I would say tenant create a name and copy and then paste the file again. Here it's again handle event with tenant created ETO. We are also changing the tenant, but we are just seeding the um, admin email and admin password, which is the default password. So if it is not available, we are providing admin at uh, ABPIO with the default uh, ABP password. So uh, every anytime there is uh, this event triggered, this handle event method will call and then we will get a bunch of users um, seeded. This is essential so that uh, when you create the tenant and that tenant uh, has a tenant name and a username and a password, this is where the, uh, the user is created uh, because in the SaaS service, we cannot, be, there is no references to the identity. Uh, so we have to catch this information through the RabbitMQ, through the event bus and then respond um, to that event and then see the user information so that when you change the when you create the tenant you can actually log in with that tenant okay once we have done that now let's try to run it okay our tie is running now go our make sure the angular app is running as well and let's try to run the create tenant method again. Now our tenant is 
created. How do you verify everything is available? Let's go and check the database. Okay, so I have um, the Tasky SAS, Tasky Identity, and then Tasky Administration Service here. So if you go and select the permissions, you can see that I have a bunch of permissions for the tenant null and then a bunch of permissions for the tenant with an ID. And you can also come and check ABP users. Now I have two users called admin and one has a tenant ID and the another one is null. That is the super admin. This is the admin for the new tenant we created. And so we have the permissions for the tenant uh, where uh, the tenant user can log in and the user. How can we test it? Let's log out, log in again, switch test one and admin. Okay, I think I chose some wrong password. Let's try to create a new tenant. I'm creating a new tenant right now. That would be test two, test two at test.com and the password is test, which does work. I will choose the default password and let's go back and then check the permissions again. Okay, now we we have a different um, ID and different permissions. So everything is working. Now we should have three users. Yes, we have three users and three tenants. Okay, two tenants because um, test one and test two. Let's log out. Now, when we run the, um, when we log in, we are getting the internal server error because the identity sorry the administration service doesn't know about the SAS service so let's go ahead and fix that so i will add uh, the entity framework core module to the identity server okay now we added the identity service let's try to run this one more time we'll try to rebuild okay now you run the things are happening i go home again Yes, now we can see tests to slash admin. Can I go to roles? Okay, it's still crashing. Identity is also saying problems because identity is also trying to figure out what is the tenant this is. And identity also doesn't have the SAS service. So let's go and add that. Okay, our um, app is up and running again. Let's try one more time we have our role yes permissions yes and users and permissions and edit okay so with this we have the entire base application running uh with multi-tenancy and we created a new tenant and then logged into the new tenant and we have our basic application uh running ah yeah but the profile seems to be not working i will try to fix that in the next video and um, the users and the roles are working fine yeah that means the resources are working uh the services are properly communicating with each other and we weren't able to see the permissions properly and then we were also able to use the permissions and then log in to a new tenant with the newly created user yes and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for this video in the next video, let's try to dockerize all those things and then uh, try to set up a CACD pipeline so that um, every time you check in, you have a build running and then uh, a Docker container created in that build. Um, and also do final cleanup on um, the architecture because right now we have uh, admin service relying on SaaS service and then um, it's tightly coupled architecture. So we have um, SaaS service in uh, identity and also in administration service. And then the SaaS service also has administration service. Uh, yeah, so it's not like um, your um, layered architecture. Things depend on each other because that's how uh, ABP works. So for the permissions, you need to know about the permission management systems, which are available in administration and um, identity should know about the permissions because the permissions are based on the user and uh, yeah all those things are tied together with the SaaS service so this is the best possible uh, way to keep things separate but also um, get uh, things done in a microservice architecture that's pretty much it for this video um, yeah so I will see you in another video bye bye